When designing the structure and shape of nature reserves as conservation areas, it's important to try and make the best choices. Very often the area is going to be limited by whatever land happens to be available, but when there are options, sensible choices have got to be made. The first and important point to understand is something called the edge effect, and this is what happens when two habitats meet. We often end up with something called a boundary habitat. Now this is basically an area where there's a kind of in-between phase between the two habitats. Sometimes this can be really good, it can be a really interesting ecological area which might have increased biodiversity compared with the two individual habitats. Here we're mostly going to be considering the negative impacts of edge effect however. Let's think about this area of land where um, there's probably going to be a lot of human influences. Maybe this is a country or it's a single island or a state, it's not important, it's just a block of land. Some of the human influences that might happen would be invasive species which have been introduced, maybe pollution that's produced from farmland, from housing areas, and then also if it's a place that's popular with dog walkers for example, maybe um, these pets are going to act as predators and are going to have some sort of detrimental effect on the biodiversity. So the local council or the government has decided let's put in a nature reserve to try and protect the biodiversity that's there. Now, all the way around this nature reserve on that sort of outlying area of it is going to be something called the edge effect, where these negative effects of human influences could potentially have a detrimental effect on the wildlife that's in there. Now, often there'll be a fence up around the nature reserve and maybe people are only allowed to enter when they're with a guide or maybe people aren't allowed there at all. But fences and barriers to people don't prevent things like pollution from entering. They don't limit the amount of invasive species that can get in. So edge effect can be a really big problem. So let's look at some of the structures of a nature reserve that are better. Obviously, bigger is much better than smaller. There is less edge effect here because there's this sort of difference in surface area to volume ratio. Um, and it also is useful for certain species. Some species need quite a large area to exist that, you know, they naturally would have quite a large area over which to roam. And so a small area is not always suitable for them. Often it would mean that we can have larger populations of organisms. Sometimes it's not just about the amount of area that there is. Having one big area is a lot better than having a bunch of separate areas which equate to the same size. There is less opportunity for organisms to connect between the different sort of chunks of nature reserve. So there's less chance of um, species mating, there's less chance of pollinators reaching their flowers, all sorts of different problems. Similarly to this, it's better if we are going to have habitats that are in clusters, it's better that they're closer together than further apart. It means that species can move between them, and again, there's more chance of species interaction, it's more like a natural environment. Clustered is a lot better than spread apart like this. If we imagine species trying to interact between these two areas, we can see that this will be a lot more difficult. But if they're clustered closer together, then this is certainly an improvement. Having some sort of bridged area is certainly a benefit. In ecology, these are often described as corridors. If we've got to separate um, the, the areas of a nature reserve for some reason, maybe by roads or something like that, then it's definitely beneficial to provide some sort of corridor so that the species can move between these areas. And circular is definitely better than any other shape. And here we're looking at the example of elongated. Let's look at the distance between the center and the edge of this area. We can see that there's this shorter distance to the edge if we've got a more elongated shape, which means potentially there is more edge effect.